Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today we are 21 of May 2024. Around the virtual table, you have myself, Damien Duportal, uh, Mark Waite, Stefan Merle, Bruno Varharten, Kevin Martins, and Jay Reddy, a new team member. Welcome, Jay. For information, Hervé is still off this week, so we don't expect Hervé to join. Let's get started with the announcements. Uh, we have the weekly release 2.459 currently being released. <clears throat> uh, container are building. Uh, I forgot to add a message, but a few minutes ago, I've aborted the packaging jobs. Now on every core release, it's stuck during the synchronization of the OS USL mirror. Synchronization is still done every 30 minutes. So we just have to wait a few minutes. And Jenkins IO was uh, uncached by the changelog publication. So the two steps that were missing are already been being or finished. Uh, and thanks, Mark, I saw you created the annotated tag. Uh, so we have container being built. The image will be available soon. So Stefan, as soon as it's available, you have the go. However, Stefan, since you are off tomorrow, I don't mind handing over this unless you feel you have the time to upgrade Infra CI today. Your call. Um, Depends on how late we finish that meeting, but I will yep. do my okay. best. If when you leave, you didn't have time, you just drop me a message informed, saying, Damien, I, I did it or I didn't. And if it's not done, don't no worry, worries, yes. and I will take care. Thanks. Uh, Mauro, Kevin, is there anything else on your side around the weekly release? So as usual, thanks for uh, following this process carefully and doing every steps needing to, to have a team success on this. Um, in the announcement, just a reminder, we have LTS release. Last week, we had. So uh, that was the version 2.4. 5.2.1 was released last week. Uh, so Stefan, Jay and I worked all together Thursday in order to deploy that version on CI, Jenkins IO, Trusted CI and Third CI. And uh, the day before, Stefan took care of really CI itself. So all the infrastructure was updated 24 hours after the, the release. So thanks everyone for the help. All the infra was upgraded between um, Wednesday and Thursday. So everything is working good so far. Is there any question on the LTS deployment process or that particular LTS? Nope, cool. Um, so that's the first time you're there. So Welcome, Jay. That's an announcement for me. So welcome to the to the team. Happy to have you on board. Uh, OK, let's drop to the upcoming calendar. So you might be surprised, but next week we will have another weekly release, as the name implies. <laughs> so um, 2.460 uh, is planned. Forward will be 80 May 2024. Uh, I don't think we have team unavailability. Hervé will be back. I'll be there. And Stefan, you will be there as well. Is that correct? Yes. Um, I haven't checked. Sorry. When is the next LTS uh, planned? We got, we, the have release, we got the release candidate on, on Wednesday 29. OK. It's point three, point 0.2, yes. Day 29. Cool. And the, and the next release for that same version is the 12th of June. OK. Cool. Thanks, Stefan. <laughs> I don't have to search. <laughs> I'm happy. happy with the outcome. <laughs> That's good. Is there anything about the upcoming weekly and LTS releases process? Nope. Okay. 
Let's all have a look if we have a Jenkins security advisory announced. No, we don't. The last one is, is a May 2. So nope, nothing to say here. Uh, do we have income upcoming major events where you will be able to meet team member? Yeah, so Open Source Summit in September in Vienna. And Olivier Varnon, uh, a longtime friend of ours, will be attending. And oh. Bruno Verachten will be attending. Mm -hmm. And please excuse my bad pronunciation of Olivier's last name. I <laughs> I know I don't get the sound right. That's okay. Just keep smiling. It's Mark's feeble attempt. That's perfect. <laughs> Thanks, and folks. just after the yeah. OSS summit, we have the CD mini yeah. summit the day after. In fact, and Olivier Vernon will be there too, and me too. Right. Same location, same players. Yeah. Right, exactly. Cool. Thanks, Bruno. Anything else on the upcoming calendar? Oh, okay, so let's have a quick look at the cloud budgets. Um, Azure CDF account. So the reminder for us is to keep the, the cost steady. Um, we had an unexpected increase last month uh, at uh, almost 4.6K. Uh, costs are under control for now this month. Uh, we have consumed 2,828 on this one. So that's a forecast at around 4.2. So that's perfect. As a reminder, our threshold goal is 4.3. Since it's an instant consumption, uh, the forecast includes the $100, but we might be at 4.3 on last minutes because that's a forecast that's linear. So it's steady, no bad surprise for now. If we want to immediately work on decreasing, we might have to focus on the public IKS cluster uh, because some nodes should be can be shrinked to use less resources. That's the first source of cost today. And the second one is the private IKS cluster, but I'm not sure if we have immediate uh, leverages while we are finishing other tasks. So, so I propose... Yep. Oh, sorry. I, I yeah, no, go, go, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead I wanted to go to back to, so the yep. Azure, or maybe I'm on the wrong wrong item. So Azure CDF paid was the one you were talking about. So I'll, exactly. I should wait till the next bullet. My pay mistake. So the cost for the CDF paid account on Azure are steady. They are under the targets. So everything is normal, but that's worth checking since we have, uh, we didn't last month. So improvement here. The Azure sponsorship credits, where we have credits, we are now entering the 27K credit left target. As you can see, the current consumption clearly indicates that we have switched CI Jenkins IO to using these credits a few days ago. We were expecting 2K forecasts until last Thursday. On Friday, suddenly a bunch of containers started to appear on that account. And since we didn't roll back, yeah, we are consuming these credits. Um, right now, the forecast is at 4K. Uh, if you did a quick uh, linear math for May, I hope we will increase this. And that's a good thing because we need to consume these credits before end of summer. Well, and, and so I assume that their forecasting is some sort of either weighted average or linear regression. And therefore, the fact that we've recently boosted the, Absolutely. The, that forecast won't be terribly accurate for a week or two, I assume, and then we'll be able to say, oh, yes, we'll, our spend looks like... But the fact that we've already spent on the order of 2,000 of that that we hadn't spent as of last Thursday is a big win. Thank you. Exactly. Thanks very much. So I'll, I'll share that good news with the Technical Oversight Committee when I meet with them after this meeting ends. I mean, consuming credits is a team effort. Between Bruno and Adrian working on the BOM release, Mark waits, trying as much as possible to maintain Jenkins plugin, and Stefan and I trying to start a lot of test cloud agents. Yeah, that's a teamwork right. effort. 
I don't even mention the Jenkins.io pull request from the whole documentation team and including Kevin that also consume credits here. So congrats. And it's and incredible. those are, as you said, those are all coming now from this Microsoft donated cloud or Microsoft donated Kubernetes cluster on Azure. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. That's really great, Damien. Thank you very much. Um, so we're in a good direction for this one. Um, I mentioned private cluster. We have the opportunity to quickly start a second cluster on that sponsorship that should be used by infra.ci that will allow us to gain a few credits here. I don't have in my head the amount, but it's a few hundreds that we could be able to not to consume on the CDF account, at least until August. So I believe that will be the last one. Yeah, I will, I will use that with the Picker image builds. That would be great. Yep, absolutely. So that's all for Azure credits. Digital Ocean is currently steady. Um, we are cleaning up resources on Digital Ocean and it's not used since a few days. So like Mark did, what we saw here, the forecasts are not realistic because we just suddenly dropped the consumption in the case of Digital Ocean because that consumption went to the previous Azure uh, cluster. So right now we still see uh, an increased forecast because we had quite some consumption the weeks before. So we should have to wait next week to see the, the realistic results. It will be visible, but not that much here but that's already a good start and it's promising for next week. These credits, um, oh, I need to update this. I forgot to update this one. These credits, uh, we have still 60K until uh, January, 2025. The goal for us is to avoid consuming too much credit on Digital Ocean because that will be a fallback for us for CI Jenkins IO during the autumn or the winter. Any question on Digital Ocean? Um, for AWS, because the past two meetings, I wasn't able to, to measure it. So here are the costs on the CloudBase account that uh, is paid fully sponsored by CloudBase. So as you see, the past three months uh, were increasing costs because it was running BOM build. Um, now, the forecast again is not realistic, but I we already saw um, a radical drop on the usage. We still have usage due, due to the update center, but clearly uh, the, the month of June will be clearly below the nine on 8K. I believe we, could our, we are close to 5.5K, which is two to three K economy. So that's good going on the right direction. And we can now focus on the update center. And for the sponsored accounts, nothing new that and we don't expect anything new until the summer. Uh, Mark, you sent, uh, sent the request for the donation for next year. We won't have result until end of June, eventually July. Right. And now the account is untouched. So that account should be our next step once we will have consumed or reached the expiration date for Azure sponsorship. Thank you. Thanks very much. Any question? Okay, so then let's start by looking at the task we were able to finish during the milestone that we just are going to close on GitHub. So as a reminder, everything is available on the Jenkins Infra Eldesk uh, repository. So that's the closed uh, tab here. So I'm gonna follow based on the order uh, on the issues on the notes. Uh, so thanks Mark for taking care and creating the issue about a spammer that has been blocked. Thanks Stefan and Jay for the help on updating CI Jenkins IO and all the other controllers. So now it's running the latest LTS. Uh, so we, we work as a team on different areas, Kubernetes and virtual machine. So Jay, you saw the virtual machine port. Next time you will see the Kubernetes port with Stefan. So thanks folks. Uh, thanks, I don't remember that issue. So thanks for the Jenkins CI repository admin for working on the visibility of the new GSOC Open Rewrite project. Um, thanks, Hervé and Stefan. 
about mentioning and working on the Docker. Uh, so the, our wiki is a container image that serves static content. And the image had issue regarding the uh, automatic, uh, automatic update of Nginx. We had a whole, whole manifest that we didn't touch since months, even years, that has been uh, uh, detected, fixed, and deployed by Hervé and Stefan uh, with Andoxborough. So thanks, folks, for keeping the infrastructure up to date and secure. And finally, uh, thanks. So that has been quite a team effort. We were able to release a count app. It wasn't released since uh, February due to multiple issues, including that last one. Uh, we were having issue on the build. Um, the pipe, we tried to merge the pipelines between CI Jenkins IO that run the CI test publicly visible and infra CI Jenkins IO that provide the build and deploy of the Docker image for that application. So the CD part. And we tried to merge during the past three months, both pipeline to have something that is the same on both controller. So if something fails on CD, you have visibility and reproductibility on CI. So the developer can contribute there and have public visibility. That was the initial goal. However, due to numerous mistakes, some were um, uh, unplanned, some were human and that happened, uh, we were having issues on running the CD ports that has been fixed. Uh, with a lot of effort involving IRM64 work. And we discovered, so thanks Stefan for working on that part. Uh, but despite this effort, we discovered that the current Selenium status for running tests on Acontap are not able to run on IRM64. We don't know the real cause. We decided to say, okay, we can continue running tests on Intel. That's not worth the effort here especially if we want to work on Akuntap, better to spend that time somewhere else. Technically, it should work with the latest version, latest dependencies, etc. Is it worth it? I don't have an answer to that question. We chose to first have a working pipeline and deployment process. Now it's not our priority, but if anyone is willing to try IRAM64 virtual machine, you can since it's the same pipeline for everyone. So any contributor is welcome to try if they want. Okay, Please. so, so yep. Damien, Damien, just to be yep. sure, so yep. there is a way for me to ask for ARM64 explicitly from build plugin, or did, did I misunderstand? Yes, you can. There is. Okay, yeah. all right, cool. Yeah, I've done that on one plugin, and no error so far. Only one constraint. It will only run on virtual machine as for today. You will have a Linux IRM64 virtual machine. So you need to set the use container agent to false explicitly, otherwise it won't work. I see. Okay, good, thank you. But so if we want to explore a particular plugin, does it also, because, so what I did with the ARM64 machines that, that have been lent to us by ARM, ARM Inc, is I built the top, the 250 most popular plugins on those two machines. And nice. I was very pleased with the results. It was a failure rate of maybe five or 10 total. So most of them work just fine, but but now you've allowed it on ci.jenkins.io, which means we get a, a cloud allocated ARM64. Very nice. Honestly, I didn't do it so much. That's only the work of Bruno and Stefan together. So... Thank you, Bruno. Thank you, Stefan. <laughs> so I didn't thanks, do folks. anything. It's all Stefan. No, 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 no. You help. Don't don't yeah, hide. Yeah, I agree with Stefan. Yes. Both of you worked on this. Thanks. Um, but yeah, just. Just to be clear, accounts app, accounts.jenkins.io is a public application used to manage Jenkins account when you want to create it and connect to issues, Jenkins.io or the website. It's working and running on ARM64. The runtime is ARM64 in production. Mm -hmm. Here, it's the build part when we assemble the application before building the ARM64 container, when we build a WAR file or JAR file, I don't remember which artifact it is, when it's, uh, it can be built on IRM64 with no issue, that's the integration test phase. And only that step on the CI that fails on IRM64 due to the testing framework named Selenium. That's the only uh, failure. The rest build, package, and run are all on IRM64 or none to work. 
Any question on these topics? Okay, so um, we had two issues closed as not planned. So usually that's a user error or the user closed the issue without further action required by us. So the first one we just mentioned that uh, given so, um, someone on the contributor tried to release a plugin manually. Yeah, that's not the best practice, but sometimes you have to uh, for numerous reasons. And they were receiving HTTP 401 errors, which mean unauthenticated. That case is usually 99% a Maven settings XML configuration mistake. And trust me, anyone can fall into this trap. So we indicated that element to the, to the user and they were able to fix and correct and process their release. Hence the close does not plan because no action required by us. And someone wanted us to retrieve their ID and password on the account that we aforementioned a few minutes ago. But I don't remember if they never answer like usual or if they answered and they were able to fix. Oh yeah, yeah, the account wasn't working and the person never answers. So yeah, as usual, most probably spam. We have an answer when people need the account. <laughs> Any question on the work done? Okay, uh, now I'm gonna try to cover the work in progress. And for each of these items, the question um, is, do we want to continue working on the next milestone? So the upcoming week, and are we able to? And who is responsible for? I'm gonna try by order of priority. Uh, so in that case, of course, it's my issue, which is the most prior. Hey, hey I'm, the info, I'm the officer, right? Okay, I'll come back in an hour. Bye-bye. <laughs> so um, as I mentioned, we were able to stop using Amazon EKS cluster and digital Ocean cluster on CI Jenkins IO. The top level goal of that issue is to have CloudBees stop paying as much as possible to that AWS account. And we use other cloud credits instead of CloudBees. So we have the AWS sponsored account and touched for today. And we decided to start consuming the Azure sponsorship credits for that. So we don't have to pay until end of summer on DigitalOcean or AWS at all. So that has been done last Friday. That looks like successful. A developer gained 12 gigabyte of memory per agent instead of eight gigabyte before. So that's a win. You also gain way more powerful CPUs, like two generations of CPUs that now we have a powerful AMD EPIC for that. Uh, the IO are way, way better. We, you have local NVMe instead of costly and limited uh, EBS. So for developer that should be way more powerful and faster in terms of resources, that doesn't mean your plugin will build faster because there might be network or other calls, but yeah. Uh, Pods should be in a better shape. We are slowly increasing following the hardware improvements. This means that will never allow us to go back to in AWS, you mean? They will want to stay on that uh, new... Uh... Uh, yes, but uh, AWS also provide the same uh, la uh, updated hardware. It's just that we, we should, when we will create a new cluster on AWS, we, we will, will create that too. up to date hardware, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's all. Please note, uh, we are currently cleaning up the former resources. So if you see page or duty alerts yeah. on yeah. AWS right and now. Digital Ocean, like right now, someone like Damien Duportal, for instance, forgot to disable or remove these alerts. So no, 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 he, he didn't forget. He, he, he did on purpose to check that the, <laughs> the, the alerting is working and to remind himself to mm. add the alert for the new clusters. I mean, he, he did a good job. Yeah, uh, thanks, but no, I forgot about the alerting part and I need to clean it up before deleting resources. Um, and one last important thing, we disabled Artifact Manager uh, for on S3 on CI Jenkins IO two weeks ago now. So artifacts are all stored on Azure. 
all the agents, whether they are Linux container, Windows container, or virtual machine of any kind, they all are on the sponsored accounts. So that no cost for us in bandwidth, which is a good thing. Uh, we will have to think in the future when we will move this agent workload somewhere else on the new AWS or digital ocean, we will have to think carefully about that part now that we are aware. Most probably that means we might want to migrate CI Jenkins IO to AWS if we more move everything on AWS. End of year. Right. But you know, for now, we have a lot of cleanups to continue running here. We have stopped managing at Kubernetes level, and now I'm working on removing the leftovers and deleting the resources on clouds. So we see the impact on the build. Any question? Success. Um, OK. Uh, Stefan, may I let you update us? I saw you. I did a message about the new update center since surveys off. Can you let us explain uh, what is the change? That's the only change we did uh, this week on that topic. Oh, yes, with pleasure. Was not prepared for that one, but I will. Um, what have we changed? Let me you, think. No, no, we didn't change anything, but you added a comment oh, yes, about the target. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. We spoke about that together. Um, yeah, we, we plan to uh, add uh, uh, mirrors in Cloudflare, two mirrors in, in two parts of the world for, for that new update center. And uh, um, I was worried about having all our bins in the same bucket and and uh, uh, remembered that I think we got VM in OSUSL, OSUSL that we're not using anymore. So maybe we should try to use one as a, a failover or a new mirror on that new uh, setup. Because if, if something goes wrong with uh, Cloudflare, um, we need something uh, on the, under the, the hand. Sul kud, under the elbow. Yeah. So that, that means configuring these machines. That could be a great idea. So we don't only depend on the Cloudflare and that will spread the workload of the update center to different uh, mirrors. Um, this machine can be uh, absolutely populated by the current process. Uh, so now the thing is, is OSU OSL okay with the risk of outbound bandwidth? Usually university don't pay for that, but worth asking them uh, because worst case they could have a certain percentage of the a uh, 50 terabyte outbound per month. <laughs> so better to let them know. <laughs> Um, we have to ask OSU, OSU, OSL. Right. We have a technical check to run. Uh, Stefan, if it's okay for you, may I ask you to do the check? Do we have enough disk? Because CPU on memory, it's okay. We used to have uh, Jira and Confluence on this machine. So I have no doubt a simple HTTP server is okay. However, that's a uh, storage amount that could be uh, uh, problematic here. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna take care if it's okay to, uh, uh, of asking OSUSL. Can, and you, take, can you take advantage of that with uh, for to talk about the, the synchronization for the, the weekly and the core? Mm. If you talk with them, oh yeah, because maybe um, that's nothing. Su OSL mirrors slowness when syncing. Yes, absolutely, good point. Uh, and finally, one last question: Should we keep the former plan about creating a second cloud for mirror? So yes. that's Cloudflare, and we have one in Europe. Should we keep creating one in the US East? Is that... Yeah, for, for me, for me, we have to because uh, um, we we are more secure about uh, Cloudflare 
with the work of, of Hervé. And having one more or two more sounds like something easily doable. Sounds mm -hmm. like. I mean, we need to put our hand in that. But I feel like um, one or two mirrors from Cloudflare are almost the same. Adding the VM may be a little more work, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I I, I, I am more than with uh, two Cloudflare and one or two VM in OCSL. That's my feeling. I absolutely agree, and your arguments make sense. So uh, that means, uh, are you okay for the upcoming milestone to start working on adding a second Cloudflare? Uh, yes, that, that was already planned, I think. Cool. Yeah, create a second Cloudflare, and you, you, you point to me with review from you. Yep, perfect. Any question on the update center migration? So as a reminder, the goal of that major task for us is to stop using the big and old virtual machine on, a on CloudBee's AWS account that existed since at least 12 years that runs on one of the oldest hypervisor on EC2. And that machine needs to move somewhere else and we are using a mirror distribution system but that we control, even the mirrors. And Cloudflare is the initial target because we don't pay bandwidth. We only pay for operations. That has been a huge and long and complex work from Hervé. Yeah, thank you, Hervé. And so um, the work in progress, as a reminder, is uh, update center to populate the distinct web services. We have two web services, the root web services on Azure that need to be populated because right now we generate something and copy on both. And now we need to copy only the required elements for the safety of the infrastructure. We weren't able to work on this, that milestone, and I should be able to work on it on the upcoming one, as I uh, told Hervé. Any question? Okay, so uh, now, Mark, were there any advancement on the um, adding the .isc file on get Jenkins IO? No, I've I've got a concept and the concept is exactly working locally, but I've got to finish the job. So okay, it's it, the more progress coming in upcoming weeks, or uh, this week actually, because next week I'm out of office. Oh, nice! Looks Disneyland. Like oh, cool, Orlando. No, Disneyland, California. Oh. Yep. <laughs> You still need a hat for next uh, meeting, Mark. Don't forget. <laughs> right, right. Must bring the mouse ears. That's right. Okay. Um, so quickly, uh, we have a few issues that are stuck that we kept on the milestones, uh, either because I should have moved them away or uh, because we did not have the material time. Okay, so all of these issues, I don't think it's worth pending any time. Uh, the two new mirrors, I will, if I find time, I will work, but that's less prior. And 2FA and Blue Ocean are um, uh, air, for Airways when he's back from holidays. Yeah. yeah. Um, Stefan, could you share with us the summary of the uh, storage migration from premium to standard SSD for a few Jenkins controller, please? Yes, we, we spoke a lot about this one because uh, we tried to find the best solution to be able to change the kind of uh, storage next time without having to migrate everything. And we decide to um, create, manually create through ASCOD, uh, Terraform, uh, the, the full chain from disk, PV and PVC. And then for the first time, migrating the data to get, uh, between the, the old storage and the new one and migrating the CI on that. And this will allow us for the next time to be able to change without migrating the data, should be. Um, 
it, I, I did prepare the, the pull request to create everything. I plan to uh, start, I plan today, but that's too late. Uh, I will probably tr uh, start on that on, on Thursday morning. Um, there is no impact on anywhere because we just create the new storage. And then I will start to work on the pod, the temporary pod that uh, it deal with the migration. So nothing will be uh, um, seen. And uh, uh, and for now, I'm working on the weekly CI, first target exactly. I'm sorry, I didn't read your, your text. And uh, right. and then that will ease the world for the next ones. Did I forget something? No, no, that's OK. Plan for real migration to be um, detailed, but looks good. I clean up the, the pull request. You can have a look with Damien, by the way. I okay. think I think it's easier. To check the it's on draft list. still. But... Yeah. Good point. Because usually we don't review draft unless explicitly asked. And that's exactly what I'm doing there. Why? And so the next steps will be once um, weekly CI is successfully migrated because I have no doubt. <laughs> That will be a release and infra? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, in that order, infra and then release. Uh, yeah, it's just a list without order. Yeah, I, I, I will probably follow that step. That um, as a reminder, the goal of this issue is to decrease the quality of the storage used by these controllers. Because last time we operated, we discovered that we are uh, using premium storage, but we don't need it. The amount of IOPS that we run on this free controller is clearly below what we had it. So we over-provisioned the hardware, and we could gain a few bucks by using proper standard SSD because premium costs a lot. Yeah, not only saving money, and also automating those change for the next time as code. So exactly. win win. That's a way for us to improve our way to absolutely to manage the persistent storage on Kubernetes cluster. And here, by defining in details, even the disk, we control every aspect of the persistent storage instead of letting an automatic process to decide for us, which... Which was we, tempting. Exactly. We, uh, we decided to trust more Terraform than Kubernetes internals. <laughs> Is that a good summary? <laughs> Yes, exactly that. Is there any question about that task? OK, uh, two issues around Packer image, Stefan. Yeah, that's Mike for me. is yours. Both of, uh, are for me. Um, let me, let me uh, start with the, the second one. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, you're changing everything. I'm, I'm, I'm no problem. Close. Just speak about the second one, and I'm updating. So the, um, the second one was the problem with GOS and update CLI um, uh, about the Visual Studio installation. Um, I discovered that we had a lot of of uh, little bugs on top of each other, and um, I had to dealt with them uh, one by one. Uh, in fact, we were not doing any check with Gauss about that Visual Studio installation. Um, I did manage uh, now, and it's working since like three hours ago. Um, it's still in the pull request, but uh, now we have the installation only on Windows 2019. And the GOES version is checking correctly only on 2019 Windows. And the update CLI is not complaining about the, the YAML of that GOES Windows because of the exception not to try on Windows 2022. And, and all those things were creating um, a domino of, of problems. I don't know if you say that, domino. Yes, OK. Um, so for the next uh, issue, uh, still in Packer image, we uh, had a problem like two weeks ago or a week ago uh, for the version of Git between AMD64 Intel and ARM64. 
um, the one uh, uh, available for AMD was not available for IRM, meaning that we had a problem building our image. So it's not a real big deal because we can still wait a few days and have the, the both version available. But that means that during that time, we cannot uh, propose and offer a new version of the all-in-one um, uh, agent. So that's a problem. And we decided to give a try to uh, the compilation of Git. And it seems to, uh, to work quite well. Uh, I'm still... Um, dealing with um, old uh, package installed by default uh, with the old Git version. And uh, and I'm trying to make sure that those um, uh, package are removed from the image before compiling. Uh, and I need to check on, I forgot what, I forgot. Uh, package cleanup path and be sure that we don't have two git version installed yeah because, that's nice. and i think that's the last step because we were able to uh, up update git because finally all the versions were the same on the repositories we are using and now we have a new version that has been delivered to production a few hours ago which features the latest git version on every platform mm -hmm. My next step on that issue will be to to check on the update CLI uh, manifest that match with that Git version to make sure that I'm I'm checking the the correct tag now. Try to oh good to compiling Git ourselves on Linux. Yes, Works. Windows is not is not impacted. Fast and easy. Currently cleaning up plus trying to check for explicit dependencies. So I'm sorry, I might have missed the part where you're able to find the dependencies that are explicitly requiring the Git package. In fact, no, because I did try to uh, add a debug with the list of package installed at the beginning of the provisioning and the git package is already in so i'm assuming that it's it's installed in the image that we're using to start up with mm. i'm trying to apt purge it not apt uh, dpkg purge it i'm on that right now okay 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 good direction because of course um, since we were using a valid package from another PPA, of course, anything that would have an explicit dependency on the APT package kit will clearly be used to be, okay, I have one installed, that's okay. But by removing that package and building our own git, of course, that introduced some chaos, including we have our recent compiled version and the former package. That can be quite a source of troubles so yeah, that's a hard requirement, ensuring that we only have one Git installed. There are maybe multiple Maybe paths. I, will try, I will try to to add a check on that for later. If mm -hmm. by mistake we install something yeah. that will install the, the dependency, we need to have a check on GOS, making sure we that's have only one Git really and good nothing point. in the package. That's a really I will, good I will point add because that we will, yeah, good during absolutely. that pull request. Tests to add to make this safer for the future. Yeah, no package to of Git installed. Update CLI to update Git source version. Yes. But that update CLI should be easier because yeah. since There's we can retrieve Git tags, that's okay. No condition, no checks. Yeah. And so no pull request trying to build something that doesn't exist yet. Just, just yes, just the tool. Version. Just a note, Mark, uh, since uh, Bruno uh, is not there anymore, for the ASIG platform, that could be a great experiment to see, is that complex to build our own Git version inside uh, Docker images? And I, I think the answer is yes, it is complex because mm -hmm. building yeah. building your own inside an Alpine distribution, for instance, probably means... Pulling that's in an the, awful lot of surprises. That's the easiest one. Oh, is it? Oh, yes, absolutely. 
because you have one package to install, then you build it and you remove the package and that's all. That's why they are able to deliver new Git version way faster than any of the user other classical distributions because mm -hmm. their the dynamic linking system is absolutely isolated. It's not as good as what could Nix or other, um, let's say exotic tools could be. But yeah, in Alpine, they are, they are really at ease with this part. Mm, and okay. they provide all the versions on packages. So that's a, Alpine on that matter for Git is a good trade-off. Um, yeah, the issue is more on the CentOS world for that, for the SIG platform. I have no doubt it will be easy on Debian, but yeah, I fear the UBE distributions. Yeah, I, I, I certainly don't want to mess with the UBI <laughs> distributions. They tend to care for their tool versions very carefully. So I, I, that, that's a point of, I think that's a point of disagreement for you and me on whether or not we should update container images. I, I don't really want to build container images with the, the Git for, with pre, our own compiled Git. I much rather like to use the, the vendor Packer, our Packer containers. I like that. That's good, but we already have the baggage with our Packer images. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think we should change. What I'm saying is, it's important to share the knowledge that we were able to do it on a sub on a sub scope of what the SIG platform is all about. Mm. So we know that in certain cases it's okay. Great. Is there any question on the Packer image topics? Nope. So just a reminder, we just deployed a new version a few one or two hours ago on CI Jenkins IO uh, on the agents. So if you see plugins failure or word behavior, that might be because of a tool that has been updated because we weren't able to perform any updates since four weeks. So that's a huge update that we had today. Um, so that issue is going to move out uh, of the milestone that will be deferred for later. I just want to mention it to greet our new team members. So Jay, most probably um, the issue about and remove immediately our fan builds will be one of your first tasks that we will expect you on if everything goes according to the plan because production is all about last minute changes in priorities, of course. No pressure, no need for you to do homework. It's just that since you're there, uh, that will be a, a mix of Jenkins configuration as code changes and a bit of Elm chart changes, but you will have plenty of time. It's just that I wanted to mention that uh, just so you feel like you are already part of the boat. Oh, but you, you are part of the boat. Um, okay. I think that's all for the issues work in progress. All the other are stuck one way or the other and need to be moved to other milestones. Um, I'm gonna look with you and we're gonna run some triage. Do we have new issues that happened since the last week? Um, I see three new issues. No, two, my bad, two. We have that old, let me remove triage here. We don't want that label on this one. Okay, try edge issue. First, we have a request from Carlos Rodriguez. Uh, Carlos is a CloudBiz employee and a long time Jenkins contributor or user. And he has an, um, an incoming talk about Jenkins and is requesting a temporal access admin read on CI Jenkins IO because uh, you want to demonstrate the ability of Jenkins to uh, orchestrate uh, agents on multiple clouds. So the read admin access is a project that's from 2020, if I'm not mistaken, Mark, that is a specific permission that allows someone to view the admin panels once logged in without the ability to change these settings. That could be a great use case. Right. Um, we privately discussed that with Daniel Beck, and Daniel mentioned that the, the admin read allow read access to the credentials. So potentially we give Carlos, or more precisely Carlos machine, a read access to CI Jenkins IO credential. 
Which, that could be a problem. Well, okay, it could be a problem, but it, we intentionally do not host sensitive credentials on ci.jenkins.io, do we? I thought it was intentional to keep that thing as low privilege as we can. Yes, it knows how to upgrade, upload to launchable, it, mm -hmm. and it knows, but it doesn't really know how to do much else, does it? It does know how to create agent on the clouds. Ah, ah, okay. So the po potential for resource resource theft by stealing a credential that can create an agent. I exactly. see. Thank you. Okay. I have absolutely all absolute trust on Carlos. However, the risk here is if someone accesses his machine, that's where the risk lies. It's not about the person or the trust on the person. It's about the trust on a, a technical system. Um, I'm not sure if it's a good or bad thing. My proposal uh, is the following as officer, is that I will try to take some time with Carlos to see what you want to demonstrate. Because maybe we could record a video of me or Stefan or Hervé or any current administrator who already have that access. And with, Car with Carlos, we record the video. So he could use the video as a support without any risk for anyone. Uh, we could see if you want to show some specific parts. We could create temporary, uh, let's say, workers with explicit name if you want to show off some elements. We have public access to the configuration as code that could demonstrate our ability to generate GCAS configuration on different clouds. So we have public access that he might be able to help. And finally, we could work with him if he has personal credential he's willing to have we could have him uh, spin up a virtual machine, which is a copy of CI Jenkins IO without our credentials. That could be also a viable alternative. So it could yeah, be background. autonomous. Background yes, version, using yeah. the vagrant. And then he can create different Kubernetes cluster to show at least multi-cloud support. And can we ask the person who did the admin read to, to enhance the admin read to not see those those credentials because it's useless admin uh, um, just admin read if we cannot use it because it shows the the credentials we will never use it there are a lot of use cases but that one is not one of these that's why and okay. trust me it won't be easy to to deal okay. with doing jenkins airbag model that easily especially on the admin boards okay that's a question worth asking, Stefan. Mm -hmm. So is there any objection if I try to discuss with Carlos or the, is there someone interested here to have that discussion with him? One, two, three, okay. So I'm gonna take the item. Um, to discuss with Carlos. Uh, and the an other new issue, I believe that one should be closable. So user complained about the one of our download mirror. Uh, so the University of Aachen in Germany looks like that mirror is automatically uh, selected for someone in Russia. That's where, oh yeah, the, the problem might be solved by us adding the Romanian uh, mirrors, but yeah, Sometimes ISP interconnection might be worth. And it looks like they're directly ping a CO2 with the person in charge of that mirror in Aachen. So again, thanks to CO2 and all of the other colleagues for hosting for free a mirror for us. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's not an issue. So I propose we add a message explaining Romanian issues, uh, new mirrors might solve their problem or long term. And if they need help, we can, but we should be able to close that issue. And thanks to see Otto to follow our issues and, yeah. and handling them. Absolutely. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, he has been mentioned explicitly. So he received the request, but that's really cool yeah. for him to take yeah, time to answer. To cover. That's really a nice sponsoring. Yes. Thank you. I think that's the last issue we have on the triage. Uh, so Mark had to leave, but we are almost there. Um, is there any topic you want to bring on the table around the recording? 
one, two, three, I didn't miss anything. Okay. So I'm going to update the milestone, publish the, the notes and the recordings as soon as they are available. Uh, so for people watching that recording, see you next week. I'm going to stop recording now. Pump.